and wholesome way of living practiced from time immemorial is long gone. Replaced by a sensory whirlwind of distractions created by this modern age. The pressures of today's living have generated a host of hurdles for our mind and body. Offsetting the natural balance and adversely affecting its proper functioning. But this can be reversed by bringing ease of order in our daily lives and raising the levels of all-around productivity. The first step in this direction is intent, recognizing the need to set things right. Yogi Raj Siddhanath is a living master who with the blessings of his guru has dedicated his life to the science of emotional and physical reset. His sadhana and mastery in this study can help bring about this change in life, rejuvenating the mind and the physical body to its true potential. Born in 1944 in the solar dynasty of Ikshvaku Ram, he used to go into spontaneous enlightened states from the age of three. After finishing his education, his spiritual calling took him to the Himalayas to pursue a life of a yogi. His real transformation happened when he was graced by a vision of Mahavatar Babaji, the Supreme Spirit Incarnate and the source of all Kriya Yoga knowledge. Since then, he has healed and transformed millions all over the world with his transmissions of pure Shakti energy. His unique gift is in simplifying the essence of Kriya Yoga in a way that all can understand and benefit from. Yogi Raj is dedicated to the furthering of human awareness for earth peace healing through self peace healing. Join Yogi Raj to help restore balance in your body, mind and soul. As a leaking vessel never can fill the waters of life so pure and still, so distracted mind fails to retain wisdom's nectar in its brain. To ease disease of random mind, a remedy suitable we must find. A rhythmic breathing, tension free, with concentration, sovereign key. I bow to the indwelling spirit residing in all of us. Today, I'm going to talk about mental fitness and meditation. We must try to understand that all of us are surrounded by a whirlpool of thoughts which we cannot control. There are two methods which are called dharna, which is concentration, and dhyan, which is meditation. These are the two processes which can educate the mind to tap the deepest resources of human nature. Now, as long as there are ripples of thoughts in the mind's lake, you cannot get to the source of the problem you are solving or you cannot get to the source of what you want to know because your mind is like a lake if it is constantly disturbed by random thought and it's a distracted mind you cannot fill your mind with true knowledge with true knowingness I don't mean information here I mean actual gnosis or actual knowingness I have said in one of my poems about education of the mind and its transformation. As a leaking vessel never can fill the waters of life so pure and still, so distracted mind fails to retain wisdom's nectar in its brain. An imperfect mind or a distracted mind is like a leaking vessel. It's no use educating people with good books and letters and not giving them concentration for concentration's sake. You must seal the leakage of the mind which is distraction. You must teach it how to concentrate 
and therefore i go on to the next verse and explain to ease disease of random mind i've called it a disease your mind is ill at ease unless it's perfectly tranquil and calm so that you can see the moon of your de- delight you can reflect nature you can reflect truth in it to ease disease of random mind a remedy suitable we must find a rhythmic breathing tension free with concentration sovereign key so i've said concentration is the sovereign key for the education of the mind in yogic palans i define concentration as the faculty of exclusive attention free from all other distraction so what happens to train the mind to educate the mind you must do a rhythmic breathing the rhythmic breathing will magnetize your spine what will the magnetized spine do you have five senses sense telephones of sight hearing taste touch and sound when you magnify and you magnetize your spine your five sense telephones are withdrawn into your spine and your mind is left free when these senses detach from their outer worldly objects and they retract the mind is free of distraction and then true concentration begins this is a process of rhythmic breathing this is the way to train your mind to think less your breath your breath will rub out idle thoughts random thoughts so this is how you do it this is very important and then when your mind stills it is like a tranquil lake and on the spotless table of the mind you can put any problem on the spotless table of your educated mind put any complex problem and you can solve it dissect it bisect it and solve your problem free from all other thoughts and distractions this is the way the yogic way to concentrate and to meditate this is the true mental fitness which leads to a meditative fitness what is meditation now meditation is an inner ascent of the concentration through ever more refined and ever more expanded spheres of mind to get to the consciousness which lies at the core of your own being this is the process it's an inner ascent of concentration you concentrate more and more and when the concentration is easier you know concentration is like rowing a boat you need an effort to constantly focus on the object of your attention meditation is like when you have reached the momentum you leave the oars and the boat glides on effortlessly without rowing it that is meditation this is mental fitness of body mind and soul I am now going to take you on a guided meditation for your mental well-being and emotional clarity to remove all emotional disturbances and to give you a tranquil mind. The meditation is divided into two sections. First is the golden lotus meditation for steadying the emotions and second is a simple meditation of the white lotus which takes the form of the swan which is for tranquility of mind and mental fitness sit steady facing the rising sun sit on a woolen blanket be calm polarize your energy at the solar heart they visualize a golden lotus and now synchronize the movements of the lotus with your inhaled and exhaled breath as your breath is naturally inhaled making the sound of sa the petals of the golden lotus open 
and as your breath is exhaled when it flows out naturally the petals of the golden lotus become a bud during this process i will be assisting the meditator with transmission and healing energy to steady your emotions to eliminate emotional suffering close your eyes steady your consciousness in your heart and breathe naturally this is a simple meditation where you observe the breath and as the breath flows in naturally the golden bud opens its petals to become the golden lotus and as your breath is exhaled naturally the golden lotus becomes the golden bud before you meditate you must say to yourself golden lotus am i who divinity breathes it inhales up with sa to open my petals and exhales down with hum to close them and as with the inhaled breath as your petals open chant the mental sound of sa and as you exhale your breath chant hum hamsa means that i am the supreme that thou art i am that hum i sa am that just be a witness to your breath this is called the hums of the watchful breath as the golden lotus opens and closes now receive the transmission of healing your emotions be steady in the center of the lotus center yourself within the lotus and now i will chant hum and sa when i say sa you open the petals of your lotus hum you close them sa open the petals of the golden lotus hum close them sa hang sa hang now raise your consciousness up to the third eye where you see a two petaled white lotus like the wings of the swan the hamsa and as your breath is naturally inhaled observe your breath the inhaled breath makes the petals of the white lotus open and the exhaled breath makes the petals of the white lotus close this is the hamsa of the watchful breath close your eyes and watch and visualize the white lotus opening its wings with the inhaled breath of sa and closing its wings with the exhaled breath of hum this technique is done for mental tranquility unless your mind is at rest with yourself you cannot have mental fitness any person who is ill at ease with himself lives in a turmoil of misery created by his own thoughts this technique of the hamsa still helps you eliminate random thoughts 
and get to a state of peaceful rest and tranquility. Now I will chant, as I say sa, open the wings of the hamsa swan in the third eye and hum close the wings of the swan. And now do the hamsa of the willful breath, inhale your breath, sa, open the wings of the white swan, hum, close the wings of the white swan. The two petal lotus becomes the wings of the swan. Sa. Let the hamsa swan open its white wings. Hung. Let it close its wings. And with every opening and closing, with every inhaled and exhaled breath, your mind becomes calmer and more tranquil. You get clarity of mind and peace of emotion. Sa, hum. Keep mentally chanting sa with the open petal and hum with the closed petal. White swan am I, who divinity breathes. It inhales up its sa to open my wings and exhales down with hum to close them. Receive tranquility and peace as I transmit to you. And with a tranquil mind, a clear mind and steady emotions, you are able to see the world with more clarity and live a life of success with a clear mind. Om. Now regards mental fitness and meditation and the benefits that accrue from these states. Formerly, long time back, human beings had many problems but they were physical problems. Now with modern medicine, we have overcome those hurdles of many of those physical problems. You see, like they had a toothache, headache, psychosomatic disorders. Many of them have been overcome by medicine. And we have made great advances in meditation, but only at the physical level. Man had many problems formerly, but today, as he grows more and more complex, man himself is the problem. So now we have a dichotomy here. So if man himself is a problem, he has come up against the unsurmountable barrier of the mind. This is the thing. And this an unsurmountable barrier of the mind can find no solution in academic education. And therefore we must go into what is called states of yogic meditation yogic concentration to keep the mind fit. 
the benefits of these meditations cannot be emphasized under any stretch of imagination they have more benefits than we can imagine they give you a healthy body mind and intuition now when we begin to practice these mental exercises called dharna a concentration and meditation they tend to bring to the fore many negative thoughts which are embedded in your mind in your memory banks and as you keep breathing and concentrating on your breath by the constant breathing these negative thoughts negative disorders which are now called psychosomatic disorders surface up from the mind's lake and first they create a mild upheaval physical and mental upheaval because it is the clearing of the pot of the mind it is clearing and as they rise to the surface the breath dilutes and dissolves your mental stress so rhythmic breathing of pranayam is a part and parcel of concentration it's a dynamic concentration which gives you a healthy mind a healthy mind is always free from stress and tension and negative thoughts these negative thoughts by positive thinking and rhythmic breathing can be removed and in mental fitness there are uh, many meditations like we have just given a few of them which help alleviate the stress asthma and bronchitis and ulcers and but yoga has always said there are not some all man's problems are psychosomatic all his mental disturbances all even physical diseases originate in the psychosomatic region this can be avoided all psychosomatic disorders can be avoid, avoided by the saying precaution is better than cure that's what yoga is largely about if you take the precaution and do your rhythmic breathing concentration and sit in the tranquil surroundings looking at the sunset a form of meditation that will lead a great way to mental fitness as a matter of fact to be perfectly mentally fit you have to be in a state of meditation and to be perfectly meditatively fit you have to be in a state of samadhi you have to get the higher state to get a tranquility in the lower state so therefore they are all connected like the lights of the rainbow fusing into one another pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan and samadhi that is the the breathing exercises the withdrawal dharana dhyan and samadhi is concentration meditation and contemplation here are certain guidelines if you want to sit for meditation the first guideline is don't try to meditate for meditation cannot be done it happens as a result of concentration and samadhi or contemplation trance happens as a result of the practice of meditation focus on your breath as you breathe rhythmically that is called the kriya yoga practice or the surya yoga practice you must do this practice in the wee hours of the morning the early hours from 3 o'clock any time to 8 o'clock then again you can do it in the evening time at sunset these are the two times where you practice your meditation there are five body electricities called the pancha pran five body electricities two or three of them are always engaged in digestion so have no food do your meditation before you have any meals on an empty stomach the third is again to wear loose clothes be comfortable always face benevolent currents face the direction of the rising sun face the east when you sit you must insulate your body sit on a woolen blanket or anything that's comfortable on the floor 
the inner motivation inspires one's intent and if your intent is definite you must definitely look within for the answer lies within